Hello and welcome to my crazy corner of the art world. I've had one of those weeks where it feels like someone lit my hair on fire and then just forgot to tell me about it. And I thought I might not be the only person who could really use just some soothing, relaxing, low-key music and watching some painting happen. So if you've had a pretty busy or stressful week, this one's for you. For today's project, I'm actually fixing up this Mario power-up storage container I made back in high school. And since it's been very nearly a decade since I created this, it was in pretty bad need of repair. In accordance with the laws of perfectionism, which I'm still working to fully get rid of, I had to go ahead and make it just a tiny bit nicer than it was originally, which is why I went ahead and sanded down some of the high spots to make it a little bit smoother than it was in the first place. But aside from that little addition, I'm basically leaving him the same as he was when I first made him, because he really was a project that I'm still to this day quite proud of, and I think he's very, very adorable, and I want him to keep his character. You know, he has lots of little lumps and bumps and I think it makes him really cute, although that may just be my bias showing. If you've watched some of my previous videos, you probably know that I'm using my angled brush here. Again, this one tends to be my go-to brush because the angle allows it to fill in actually really neat, precise lines that are honestly shocking. If you haven't used an angled brush, you really should. But it also allows you to fill in large sections that just need flat fills which is most everything I needed when repainting this little guy. And don't think I wasn't tempted to use my angled brush for the eyeballs as well, but I don't have any angled brushes that have a small enough profile for the size of the eyes that I needed. So I did go ahead and switch over to my fine point brush when filling these in. And yes, I do appreciate the irony of the fact that I own a kajillion brushes. I'm pretty sure I've counted that's how many there are. But at the end of the day, I typically only use about three of them if I'm really being honest. The third brush just being a cheap chip brush, which I use for larger paintings. And you guys may or may not see that in the future, depending on if I ever get around to making another XL painting. Which I probably will, but first I have to have an idea that is worthy of the large canvas. And right now you can watch me commit the ultimate sin of artistry. Trying to be lazy using a pre-made color, even knowing full well that I wasn't going to like it, but I still try it anyways. And yes, I will pay for that soon. Very, very soon. But in the meantime, I'm going to continue filling in the red of his cap. Which, by the way, am I the only artist that's very particular about my reds? It feels like every other color of paint, I can very easily find a tone that I'm satisfied with and matches the project and the look that I'm going for. But reds in particular seem to be one that is very difficult to find. I don't know if I'm maybe shopping at the wrong place, but it always seems like the reds are either pure fire truck red, so very, very orangey, or just straight maroon. But I like this red, so I'm never letting it go. And as promised, here's the part where I pay for the sins of my past. While unquestionably more convenient, the pre-made color I was using really just didn't have enough pink in it to look lifelike, which meant that I needed to mix up a custom color. But to be fair, mixing custom colors can actually be a lot of fun. Now that the first layer of color has dried, it's time for a rinse and repeat going back in with each color to really tone them up and make sure they're cleanly saturated. And because it's a pale color, I get to paint the body again and again and again. I tell you what, out of the entire process, I think redefining the eyes was actually my favorite part because it gave a shocking amount of life to all of the paintwork that I'd done prior. You know, every project has that one final 10-15% that does, you know, 50% of the work for making something feel like it's finished. And for this power-up, it turns out that was the eyes. 
Except I made one eye a little too tall. Gonna have to fix that. You know, later. And now for the finishing touches, going back in with my fine tip brush to give him those little highlights that bring life to the character. Not gonna lie, he looked the tiniest bit soulless without his little eye sparkles. And then I gave him two little dots of white and boom, suddenly it is a Mario Mushroom power up. I love those moments, you guys, I really do. And for the final touches, we give him a spritz spritz of some matte sealant so that this time, the next 10 years can treat him a little more kindly. And bam, we have a finished power up. Now if only these actually worked to make me taller in real life, I would never have to listen to a short joke again. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more.